Have you ever wanted a build that you can literally use to solo any PV content as well as help your fire team during group activities? A build so versatile and powerful, you never even have to think about taking it off and can swap out a few weapons from time to time to line the modifiers in those activities. This is that build. Hunters have always been handicapped in endgame content and in solo content with damage resistance and damage output. Invisibility is nice, but once you game with an enemy, hunters are often squishy, lack good DPS options, and are not as strong supporting fellow teammates. With the recent three, Void 3.0 changes, this is no longer the case. I literally have not taken off components this build since Witch Queen launched. Use this build to never die again. Let's get into details. So first off, let's talk about abilities, aspects, and fragments. First, I'll be using Void Hunter. I'll be using either Deadfall or Moby's Quiver. Now, the choice of that will depend on what I'm trying to do in the activity. Deadfall, I'll primarily use to regenerate my super and I'll talk about more how that works. And Moby's Quibble I'll be using if I want to use a lot of DPS to a boss. So again, it depends on what you're trying to do in that particular activity. I'm going to use Gambler's Dodge. That will allow me to get my Smoke Bomb back, will allow me to get invisible when I dodge near enemies. I'm going to be using Void Wall. This grenade has a good cooldown. It comes back fairly quickly, and it allows you to do a lot of area control when ads are coming to you, which I'm going to need for a lot of PvE content. I'm going to use Trapper's Ambush. Primarily, again, because as I'm using my smoke bomb, I want to weaken enemies. I also want to make my nearby enemies invisible when I use my smoke bomb on them. In addition to that, I'm going to use Stylus Executioner. Defeating a weakened, suppressed, or volatile target grants invisibility and true sight. After performing a Stylus Execution, your next melee attack, while well, invisible, weakens targets. These two will partner up well later on my build with some of the weapons and other mods I'm going to be using to allow me to go invisible a great deal amount of time during end game activities. I'm gonna use Echo of Expulsion. Void ability final blows cause targets to explode. This will allow you when you use an ability to have a, especially if you use a lot of ads, allow them to explode, which again will allow you to regen abilities which will feed into this build. Echo of Reprisal. Final blows one surrounded by combatants grant super energy. So again, you see the theme of trying to get back your super as quickly as possible. And then things I will do later in this build will also allow me to stay near surrounded enemies for longer durations. Echo Starvation. This is the new fragment that came out after the raid was completed, which allows you when you get a orb of power, which are more difficult to get. But again, in this build, I'm going to show you how you can get them easier. But when you pick up a void uh, orb of power that you can get devour. So this will come in really handy in this build. Now, the devour is short. It's five seconds, but there are ways you can extend it. But that's one thing hunters have never been able to do. Invisibility is nice, but having Devour, to be honest with you, will allow me to just stay on my Hunter and not have to go back to my Warlock because a lot of times in endgame activities, I'd want to be on my Warlock because I'd want Devour. But the problem is the Warlock, its movement is not as good as the Hunter's and I couldn't go invisible. With adding these together, you'll see in this build where I'll be able to do things that I've never been able to do in the game before. So now let's talk about mods. So I'm going to use Kinetic Siphon times 2 Kinetic Siphon, when you get multi-kills with a kinetic weapon, you're going to generate orbs. Having more than one of those allows the orbs that you generate to give you, to allow you to generate and get your abilities and your super back more quickly. Now, while this might sound like a, a funny mod to put on, you'll see with the choice of weapons I'm going to use, especially on the kinetic slot, that I'm basically going to be able to generate orbs whenever I want at will. And in some cases, to be honest with you, it feels like it's easier to do than it was previously with the old master working system. Unstoppable Glaive. So I use this primarily because my Glaive is going to be something I use quite a bit in this build. The Unstoppable obviously gives you the ability to stun champions, unstoppable champions. Take in Charge. When you pick up an Orb of Power, you're going to get a Charge of Light charge. Now, I have taken a little bit of a backseat on Charge of Light builds probably in the last season or so, primarily because Elemental Well builds were becoming big. But with the ability in this build to generate orbs, Actually, it's back on the table, and again, it'll really help out. Thermoshock Plating. This is a seasonal mod from this season. What's key about this mod is that it will give you both Arc and Solar Resistance. If you put this on a Void Chest Piece and use Void Resistance, which is another mod I'm using, in that case, you're going to have damage resistant to all three damage types. So again, you could change this. You could double up and, and put other things on here, you know, double up your Arc or anything, depending on what activity you're in. But this allows us to become a Swiss Army Knife where in any activity, you don't really have to think about the burns. You'll have protection from all three. Stacks on Stacks. So Stacks on Stacks is a void 
Charge of Light mod that basically allows me to get a second Charged with Light on this build. The reason for that primarily is I'm gonna use Charge of Light a lot. Having one is great. Being able to have one in reserve is gonna come in handy. I use a Rocket Scavenger also. Rocket Scavengers are cheaper this season. That's one reason I'm using it. I like using rocket Rockets as far as my power slot depending on the activity you can use something else again it's going to depend on the activity and what you're using to do damage high energy fi uh, fire while charge of light gain a bonus to weapon damage each defeated combatant consumes one stack of charge with light now the key with this is when you're using this in just regular combat when you're fighting small adds your charge of light are actually going to go way quicker but it will allow you to take them out quicker however if you can reserve like a charge of light and then you start doing damage against a boss which you're not going to kill immediately this will allow you to do extended damage to that boss over a period of time, which again, will help you out in DPS phases. Overload grenades. Now, the primary reason for this is overloads are kind of a pain, and they can be glitched sometimes. And I'll probably have an overload uh, stunner if I need to on my character. However, with this overload grenade, first off, I'll be using Void Wall a lot. It's great for spreading out over an area of an effect, and I will get those grenades back pretty quickly in this build. So this allows me fairly quickly, without a weapon, to be able to stun overload champions and while that grenade is on them to be able to take them out really quickly and then suppressing glaive suppressing glaive this is just a great mod so this allows me to put the suppressive effect on an enemy with the glaive the key to this is if I, I suppress that enemy and then i kill them then that allows me to get stylus executioner which allows me to go invisible and this is a long invisible this is like an eight second invisible so this will allow me to come in take out enemies and get out of trouble really really quickly so now let's talk about weapons and armor. So what I use in this is Wither Horde. Now I'll tell you the main reason for Wither Horde. Wither Horde, even though it uses special anim ammo, is a kinetic weapon. What that means is, is not only can I use this for ad clear, but if I put that down and it takes out a few red bars, it's going to generate an orb of light. Literally, if you're in a room with a lot of ads, just put it down and you'll generate all sorts of orbs of light for you and your fire team, which again, it's just great because... Wither Horde is great for air effect control. A lot of the end game content you'll be trying to solo on your own, especially if you're trying to do it by yourself, a lot of that you will have a lot of adds that you'll be able to kill with this, right? So that's where Wither Horde comes in handy, especially against smaller adds. And even in the raid, there's tons of areas where defending or doing other things as other people are doing activities. So this comes in really handy and it's great for generating orbs and for protecting a large area. I use the Void Glaive that came with the season. I use that again for the Unstoppables. And also, as I talked about earlier, every time you kill a Suppressor Weaken a Volatile Combatant, you go invisible. And you go invisible for eight seconds. So you can use this to kind of go over the battlefield. You can take, let's say you're in trouble, you're hurt. All you do is kill a red bar, you go invisible, you go hide. Okay, you don't have to throw a smoke bomb or anything else. You can save your smoke bomb to use later if you need to. The one thing I will tell you it's kind of annoying with the Glaive is it does help you get invisible and stun champions. If you do want to use your smoke bomb, you're going to have to swap out of the weapon unless you have it mapped differently in your keybinds, but otherwise you have to swap out and you can do that, but you'll have to swap out and use your smoke bomb if you want to use that separately. But again, not a big deal. And then finally on armor, what I typically do for a build like this is I'm going to have, I'm going to have some resistance because you can't have zero resistance. I know some people say that, but you do need to have some resistance. I put a ton of recovery. I'm gonna put a ton in intellect so I can get my supers back quicker. And then if I can get grenades, it's probably the other thing. I'm not as worried about mobility as much because I'm not trying to get my smoke bomb quicker with this build. So I'm not worried about that. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use Orpheus rigs. Now again, I've used this in one of my other builds from the season. The primary reason is Orpheus rigs give you two things. So when you use Orpheus rigs with Deadfall, for the most part, as long as you kill adds during that 30 seconds that the tether is active, if you kill adds near it, you're going to get 50% of your super back. And with some things I'll be doing with this build, it's going to even be faster. So you can get your, your super back basically in less than a minute. If you're in an area that has a lot of content, a lot of adds, and a lot of enemies that you're trying to kill. With Moby's Quiver, you can switch this over if you're in a DPS phase. And you want to do a lot of DPS to a boss. Because you get three sets of three shots. That's told nine shots and they happen very quickly. This is probably for a hunter the highest one of the highest dps options they have in the game so again you have the capability of playing in a mode where you're doing ad clear and trying to get your super back with deadfall and then if you're in a mode where you're being asked to do dps you just switch really quickly over to moby's quiver and again you can do a ton of dps so again ton of flexibility 
ton of options depending on the mode that you're trying to do. The other thing I failed to mention was the specifics I have on my glaive. My glaive has an enhanced threat detector, which basically allows me when I'm surrounded by enemies to reload and use my glaive quicker. This comes in really handy. The other thing it has is Thresh. So what this allows me to do is if I'm using the glaive to kill a lot of small enemies, it will incrementally also give me more super back quicker. So in practice, let's talk about how this works. How this works is, obviously, let's talk about the, the deadfall sort of mo mode because Moby's Quiver, you can use that, but again, that's only for DPS. But for deadfall, you're gonna put your tether down. You're going to be surrounded by enemies. As you kill those enemies, you're going to get the benefit that you get from Orpheus Rig. After that, because you've been surrounded by enemies as you've been killing them, you're also going to get more super energy back. By having Thresh, you're also going to get more super back. And let's say using Wither Horde and then you're generating orbs, those orbs are also going to allow you to get your super back. So again, the key here is you can get your super back really, really quickly. Now, the Glaive in addition, while you're doing that, will allow you to go invisible constantly. Obviously, this is very useful when you're around a bunch of ads because then they can't hit you. The other reason you can use this is, let's say, you want to take out a champion. So let's say you go invisible to begin with to get near the champion. Then you start hitting it with the glaive. And let's say he's doing some damage to you. You're in trouble. Let's say you don't have a smoke bomb. Just find a red bar near you. Kill it with suppression. And you go invisible again. You back off. You let you know, rest your fire team. Or in your case, you let yourself go back, retreat, try again. Since you have all the resistances with thermostat shock plating, you're gonna be able to stay in the fight a lot longer. Then what you're gonna to want to do is you're going to get those orbs of light that you're generating from your kinetic siphon type two with your wither horde. You're gonna be able to get those to get charge of light, which is gonna give you high energy fire, which is gonna give you more damage DPS. This will also come in handy when you get to a DPS with a, with a boss, it'll give you additional damage that you can use. In addition, while you're getting those orbs of power, that's gonna give you devour. That's gonna give you devour for five seconds. Don't worry about getting an orb again. Just go in with your glaive, kill another opponent, which is going to make you visible. It's also going to increase your devourer. So you're basically going to be devour all the time, invisible all the time. I mean, to be honest with you, it's kind of easy mode for the hunter. It's easy mode for any content that you're going to do, whether you're with a fire team or whether you're solo on your own. So really, guys, that's it. Again, it's just an over. It's a, just a flexible, overpowered build that allows you to stay alive, which is good in PvE content, especially trying to solar, trying to do with a fire team in a raid or things that have res tokens where you don't want to die. It allows you to basically control ads really well, which again, there's a lot of ads, a lot of the activities that we have currently in the current season. It allows you to do a great amount of damage with the high energy fire, but also with the ability to switch over to Mobius Quiver, which you can do at any point and get your super back. And again, you'll have your super back all the time with Deadfall, which again allows you to cycle through and do the same thing over and over again. So like I said uh, earlier in the season, I felt going into the season that the Hunter was going to be a little nerfed. It wasn't going to be as good because I saw all the hype around what the what the Titan and the Warlight can do. But allowing Hunters, who've always been able to go invisible, allowing them to also have Devour and have them Devour for a long period of time, honestly, is almost unfair. And I'm loving it in all PvE content. That's the video, guys. If you like it, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, jump to my Discord, and I'll see you, Guardians in the Tower.